We're recording. Make a motion to start meeting. Second. Well, no, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Call the meeting. April 2nd, 2024. Welcome everybody, by the crowd. First, uh, this is tonight, signature folder. folder. Oh, yeah. Uh, we had one item, timber cut, timber cut. That was it. On the uh, second item, manifest, make a motion to approve the manifest for March 28, 2024, in the amount of $34,641.60. Second. All in favor? Aye. Right. Make a motion to approve the manifest dated April 4. 2024, in an amount of 30293 Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Make a motion to approve the Board of Selectments meeting minutes dated March 19, 2024. Second. Third. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. As far as appointments, we had nothing. Uh, review of mail. Uh, we had a letter from Freedom uh, Food Pantry uh, for a, for a thank you concerning all the donated cans and everything else that was provided at the elections. And that was nice. Uh, board of Select and uh, reports. Start with Chuck. Okay. Um, regarding the historic Hall project. I worked with the mayor of Gaps today um, to prepare for moving the LP gas tank this summer and I'm limiting the amount we're going to put in it until then. I contacted Eversource regarding possible grants for the building as a result of the level two energy audit we had done in the fall. And I'm going to be doing a follow up with the New Hampshire Division of Historic Resources. The Moose Plate program, they actually have a state arts council grant program. And I found out this morning that we might be eligible to apply for a grant that might help us fund doing the renovation to the bathrooms to make them ADA acceptable. Um, did a lot of homework regarding the snowstorm stuff, and I think we're gonna get into that, so I won't bother with any more detail on that. And um, that's it, boss. Chris? Well, obviously, I'm going to address the letter from, I believe it's Paul. Is it Paul Bartlett? Paul's that letter from you? Yeah. So I'm going to go point to point that might answer some of the people's questions while you're in the room. So obviously, the the point, uh, the first point you make is about people staying home and stuff. I think, you know, I agree with you 100%. There are people that just can't stay home, right? We all have jobs. There are infrastructure that operates 24-7. Um, they're not just Monday through Friday jobs. Um, for those of you who didn't aware, we did have a very productive meeting with the contractor, the police department, and the fire chief um, prior to this meeting today. And it was about what went wrong with the previous storm and what we're going to do better moving forward with this upcoming storm. So to address uh, some of the things that Paul has brought up, uh, so there are 44 miles of road in the town of Effingham. It's about 50-50, dirt to tar. So you do have to plow both ways. So there's 88 linear miles, lane miles of road that we maintain. Um, it was brought to our attention through that meeting today that our most recent updated that was signed and adopted June 16th of 2023, the winter roads and inclement weather policy. Um, we that had previously asked for this to be put up on our um, town website, and it's it's brought to our attention that it's still the previous one that was existing. Um, in this letter, Paul and, and some other people have mentioned, it makes reference to uh, the state um, 
Uh, bear with me for a second. I got to find that part. But the previous contract over the years discussed, and it, it reflected to the state's winter road maintenance policy, the OPs. We adopted our own. So one of the things that we've learned in the past, um, going through the NHMA's classes on knowing your territories and winter road maintenance and stuff, the town is more liable if they don't adopt their own policy. If you just piggyback somebody else's policy like we were doing over the years, the town is more liable. So we wrote one last year and adopted it and it addresses a lot of these issues uh, mainly, um, again, to, to Paul's letter, the types of roads, type one, type two interstates and things like that. Uh, obviously, we don't have those types of roads. We don't have any interstates in town the, the, that we maintain. We have class five um, roads and highway to summer cottage. That is basically, that's all we have here. Class five roads and highways to summer cottage, which is still class five, but certain sections of them do not have to be maintained year round without them reverting back to a class six. So uh, Wilkes and Swamp Road, Molly Philbrook Road. Um, those are the two main, right off the top of my head, that are um, Highway to Summer Cottage. Those were adopted in 2015. <clears throat> um, <laughs> as far as inspecting the vehicles for the contractor, the Board of Selectmen at the time last October, we did do a vehicle inspection. Part of the vehicle inspection was the vehicle inspections, the registration of the vehicles, everything was intact. There were some that were in the process of still being built and ready to go, but the Board of Selectmen did do a vehicle inspection. Um, due to the nature of the winter, this is from the contractor and this is, and I'll let these gentlemen chime in if they want to, um, but this is coming from somebody that does this for a living. It has not been a typical winter. The roads are extremely, extremely soft. There is no frost in the ground. So to put a vehicle that we requested and has and have requested over the years to do maintenance on these roads, it's too heavy for these roads. They'll sink in the roads when they're trying to plow them. So you just can't travel down the road with that. So you're having to use smaller vehicles. That's why we're seeing smaller vehicles. And I understand the public's frustration. You see a pickup truck go by or a one time go by. Um, and what a lot of people don't realize is when you see a truck go by, if it doesn't have a dump cart on the back, it must be just a pickup. Well, they do actually make three quarter ton, or excuse me, one ton vehicles that are in a fleet side conventional pickup truck style body, just so everybody's aware. The GVW is a lot larger and is the same. It just doesn't have a dump car on it. Um, but because of the way the winter has been, the roads are too soft. We can't put <laughs> these huge trucks on these roads. You just can't. Um, it tears up the roads. And this storm that's coming, just so everybody knows, is going to be worse. And the reason why I say that is the previous storm, although we got two feet of snow in some parts of town, the week prior to that, it was below freezing almost every single night. It was down in the in the teens. We did, we're not afforded that luxury this storm. Since last Sunday, it has barely got below freezing and it rained. So the roads are even softer. So you're going to still see pickup trucks. The vehicles that were in question that were on social media, said there were pictures of, they have been registered. Before this storm, we will have copies of all of those current registrations and inspections. There is a 10 year, a 10 day grace from the time that you register a vehicle before it has to be inspected. <clears throat> Even still with that grace period, the contractor is doing his best to, to this afternoon and tomorrow to get the vehicles inspected. But they were registered as of yesterday, the two vehicles in question that were on social media. And again, that falls to, you know, the other vehicles that we inspected, they're ready to go and they were registered. They can't put them on the road. You can't put a truck that weighs 40, 50,000 pounds before you put anything on it, on these dirt roads. And with 50% of our roads being dirt, it's, you know, you, you're you asking them to do that. Um, let's see. Uh, phone number to call when there's a problem. Um, I have made... Um, Every attempt to make sure that everybody in this town knew, you can call me. You can call my cell phone. I handed my card out. Um, and I'm not going to lie. 
I may not be able to get to you because I'm doing the same thing. I'm driving a plow truck. I plowed for 29 straight hours this last snow fill. Not looking for a pity party, but I'm just telling you the facts. And the facts are I did plow for 29 hours myself and parts of my route, they just plain and simple don't have service. I'm just gonna add that you also have the chief that they can call. Yep. They say you don't have service. Yeah, that's how much they put an antenna up. Um, but if you leave me a message or you text me, I can, I will get back to you as soon as, so my route does this. So usually when somebody texts me or calls me, I'm like this. And then when I get back up here, then I try to call you. Anybody that's called me before, the chief can attest to this. We were playing phone tag a little bit this last snowstorm. I'd get to a point where it was a high ground and we, we would communicate. You still can communicate through us. You can communicate through the Carroll County Dispatch. And we will be in touch. There is there is no way that there is not there is there, there's always a way to get a hold of us. Mm -hmm. um, it it, does, it doesn't matter. And you can call the town hall. Obviously, during the day if they hear, but um, you can you can call me directly. If you can and you can call dispatch, and they'll get a hold of the contractor or the chief. Or, or yeah, sorry. <laughs> Or any of the other officers that are on. Sorry, I shouldn't have just said the chief. So. Both chiefs. Just dispatch never shuts down. They never go Correct. Um, Especially the high winds this weekend. I'm hoping that the high winds don't hit us. That's just both on the west end. Well, I was also hoping it wouldn't snow at all. Sorry, I'm going to go back through the letter and make sure I didn't miss anything. Paul, please jump in if you have anything that I've forgotten. Um, oh, I shouldn't. I shouldn't have said that. That would have to go through the chairman. I apologize. <laughs> I can't give you permission to talk. Um, that was some office best be closed. Is me time to ask all of our Yeah. So you did mention the answer machine. So um, yeah. Again, you can call dispatch. You can call me. Um, during off hours, and I do and will get back to any phone calls. Um, one thing I do not do, speaking for myself, one thing I do not do is I do not go on social media. So if you're trying to do it by that venue, that is ill effective. So, same here. And if you have a question or a concern, I would much rather receive a hundred phone calls during a snowstorm than for this board, the contractor, the police department, or any other citizens of this town to beat each other up for weeks on end. And I appreciate Paul's diplomacy and uh well he said okay. <laughs> <laughs> his diplomacy and trying to answer some questions um the timing for him leaving right now is, is kind of poor i wanted him to verify uh even though i don't go on social media i'm going to tell you that i have people that are my friends that like to screenshot things and send them to me because they think it's funny um i don't think it's funny but for anybody in this town to think that there is a mole or a leak in either one of the three of us, that this letter that was out there, the contractor delivered that letter himself to Paul. The letter that was in question, Edward's letter. Ed, Edward's letter. Um, so I just want to put that to bed right now. I do not like social media. That's one of the reasons why. We did not have that conversation with Paul. The contractor himself gave Paul that information. So, and I think that in his in his defense, I think that he was trying to alleviate some of the questions and concerns of the citizens of this town. And he thought that that might be a good venue for uh, publicizing that information to you folks, right, wrong, or indifferent, but that is what it is. Um, that's kind of the, the highlight of Paul's letter. I think I touched upon everything, but... Uh, we do have uh, a contingency policy moving forward and actions in place. Um, 
in part with with our our work, but in the contractor himself, um, a reputable insured um, company is going to assist him and and back him up back him up too in the event of breakdowns. Breakdowns happen. Um, and for anybody to say that, well, it's you guys should have done your due, due diligence when you did your inspection and make sure he's got nice, shiny new equipment. Um, most people know I work for the town of Osby Highway Department. We just purchased a 2024 Western Star six wheeler, all equipped for the snow that cost $292,000. So we, as a town and the tax money, cannot expect anybody that we sign a contract with to have a fleet of equipment like that. If we want to do that, we need to have a hard conversation about how much as a town we are willing to spend and start a highway department. But to have a contract that's that's something that we can afford and we've become accustomed to, to, to expect a contractor to have $300,000 six wheelers at their disposal in their fleet, I think is, is too much to ask. I really do. Um, So that, you know, he does have a, we do have a backup plan in the event that there are breakdowns, but everything breaks down. That's the point I was getting at. I have a brand new truck that I drive from the town of Mosby Highway Department. It was broke down twice this storm. It has 12,000 miles on it. Um, brand new things break down every day. It, it stinks. It's the nature of the job, but given what we're doing, given what we're doing, we're plowing and grading the roads at the same time this time of year. We just are, and it's tough going, it's tough sledding, it's hard on this equipment, especially when you're pushing that amount of snow. So, and unfortunately, that's all I've had time to focus on this week, this week. So, uh, I don't have anything else besides roads. So, I guess I'll take I had a couple of items that I did, did uh, on March uh, 20th. I met with Lakes Regions Planning Commission with uh. Mark and uh, this guy was Matt Rose. We did, uh, basically, we did tour the transfer facility, made some recommendations for safety, updating the facility, a um, couple signs that we should be putting in place, and Mark agreed. He's also stated that he writes grants for uh, different uh, transfer facilities and all that. So I kind of pushed him to do okay, write a grant up for uh, the shelters over the shelter roofs, over the containers. And uh, and engineering design, so he's in process of doing that. So we'll see how that comes out. Um, also did a tour of the fire department on three twenty two. Get myself a mirror with the chief from the fire department and a couple of recommendations. Looking at it and stuff like that, he made and things that they want to update and stuff. So we'll be addressing those situations as we go along. So that's it for me. I just had, I did have something else. Okay, I go ahead. Oh, so I like, hopefully some other people attended the breakfast at the fire department this weekend. It was absolutely delicious. And, mm -hmm. and as the one thing social media sometimes is good for is giving praise. And I will add to that. Brandy's uh, pancake, pancake fried with a secret recipe, whatever is absolutely delicious. Um, and I know it was storm related that you guys had to postpone it, but I think it worked out great the way it worked because we went right from that to the Easter egg hunt at the library. And for what it's worth, maybe we can try to plan that in the future. I think that was a great transition from breakfast to the Easter celebration. So Absolutely. The fire department association would like to get the nonprofits together to start planning our events in conjunction with each other moving forward. And, and the Easter egg hunt at the library was awesome. Uh, I couldn't not believe I would venture to guess there's 60 kids at the for the Easter egg hunt. Yeah, great to say, yes. And uh it was it was awesome. And they the the staff at the library, I have to be cautious not to say the G word. The uh, staff at the library did a fantastic job, uh, as always. And uh it was my grandson had a ball, I had a ball. So thank you very much to the library staff for doing that. Thank you. Sorry. No, that's, that's good. That's good. <laughs> Um, next, town administrator report. So, two things. Um, one, I've been doing the annual facility report for waste management to get that on um, and send it to ES. Um, 
and is also getting a report completed for Primex for our workman's comp, um, unemployment, and property insurance that you know, we usually have to get every year. Um, the next thing I have that you know the board is all aware of is a task list that's in front of you. Please let me know if you have additions that you want added to kind of fix things. Um, how, how long do you want it? <laughs> <laughs> However long. But um, so pretty much I have it in order from what hasn't been started yet. I have the priorities on there. Um, and I have at the very bottom what has been completed. But if there's anything in addition that you want on that list, I'll ask that you email me, let me know tonight, and we'll keep it updated so that way there's a progress for everything we want to see and have done. Bob here is done, right? So we didn't have it on the list. Cool. No, it's not on the list, but that Copy is done. Copy. Pop here. That's all I have. Is that new one connected to the internet? It is new and connected. All set up, working perfectly. So, is it on a? Uh, no, off my walk. I want to be able to print my house and send you some. Okay. All right, department reports. Let's start with uh, the chief Elkridge. All right. Wow. Uh, there's a copies of our monthly stats if anybody wants them. And I'm going to leave copies of my business card and the sergeant's business card in case you don't have our phone numbers or the dispatch phone numbers. So that way, if you need, do need to report any sort of an issue, both those numbers are right on there. Hold on. We didn't get a copy. Oh, sorry. I put them up there, but I got okay. sidetracked from, uh, side from our previous one. Um, wait till they all get home. All set there. Okay. So in the month of March, us as a police department handled 346 calls for service. One arrest was made. We had 66 motor vehicle stops, three motor vehicle accidents, and the canine was deployed out four times, three of which for, for community events. So she brought out and did some of the community events. She was at the pancake breakfast. We did a wellness event at the elementary school, and then she also was at the library coffee hour. Um, and then we, we were on a track once, which was a believed to be impaired subject that had fled from a motor vehicle accident. And we tracked her approximately a quarter mile until the track went dead. And there's a set of tire tracks, which where I believe the person was picked up. Any questions, comments? She's, she's incredible. Her and I actually, at the end of this month, are going to national certs in Massachusetts. We'll be certified in drugs, patrol work, tracking in her articles. I have a question. Uh, yes, sir. Do you have any drones yet? No. Would that augment the uh, dog search at all? I have not looked into that. Maybe worth looking at. I've seen, I've seen it deployed to help find tra and track suspects and to keep an eye on an officer that would be. Yeah. So if you're handling the dog, Brian's back in another location. Yeah, it would be something for us to look at for sure. Yeah, thank you. Anybody else? Gentlemen? You know what you I, yeah, I, I, I didn't have a chance to play live here. <laughs> it's not that important. Um, you know what I'm talking about, right? But I know that over the last three months, we're up significantly from last year as we were over the We were 60 something calls last month and 80 something, I think, in January. So we're well up over 100 calls busier than we were in 2023. No, sir. Hi. Thank you, Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Next up, fire department chief. I know. All right. Well, you did ask the question. Cool. Yeah, I mean, you, you did ask if anybody had questions. Yeah, did you, yeah, did you anybody else have any more questions? Thought somebody had a question. Yeah. All right. If you do, I'm here. Sorry, go ahead. All right. 27 calls for March for us, bringing us to 80 for the year so far. Uh, we're right about on par with where we were last year. Um, of those calls, 18 were medical emergencies, three tree and wire down calls, two service calls, three motor vehicle accidents, and one building fire. Uh, the one building fire was a mutual aid into Porter. Uh, we sent three staff and they left one in town to cover in town. Um, one of the motor vehicle accidents, we did have a little bit of entrapment over on Townhouse Road. 
Uh, we did actually use a tow truck to pull it out from between two trees so we could actually get the individual out of the vehicle. Uh, two of our members this month went to a forest fire warden training over in Tuftonboro and got our annual refresher. And we did take delivery of the repeater heart that we're still waiting on license. Any questions? Yeah. What's the license thing? The FCC has to license us to actually use the frequencies. So we have to wait for them to assign us frequencies. Um, What's the time period you'll be exclusive in it? We don't really know. I would expect within a month, but it depends on how hard they have to coordinate to get frequencies that won't interfere with our neighbors. Got it. And if, may I? Yeah, so piggyback on. So on the repeater, there are some faces here we didn't see at town meeting where we talked about the repeater. Once that's up and about, so that is a, a, a radio frequency for the town of Effingham. There is a base station that's in the office. There always has been when we used to do this before, but it wasn't quite as effective without a repeater. So that's what this is for. Once it's up and online, not only will these gentlemen be able to communicate with each other, but the contractors, both summer and winter, will have radios too. So that is going to be yet another avenue for communication moving forward for our road contractors. Namely, you have a storm like we what we just had to add to you know Paul's letter about communication. That's going to be another avenue. Unfortunately, it's not up and running now, um, but yeah, it next will be will, will be before next winter. So, any additional questions? I see Rebecca's walking around the building. So we'll wait for her. That's that cheap. Thank you. You're up, Rebecca. And uh, you can grab that chair if you want. Grab the chair. I'll pull one of these with us. Yeah, you're good. You're good. It's okay, gentlemen. Yeah. Yeah. So. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> hey. Okay, I'm all set. Do you want to open up for questions? Do you want to just tell us what you, what you got going on? Haven't. There's not that much going on, although I will say, I will just remark, because I just noticed it, that, and this has nothing to do with my job, <laughs> um, that the don't park between the signs that protects handicapped parking, if that's what it protects, the sign on this side should be further down, because where it is now, people park just beyond it and block both handicapped ramps. And so the the no parking should extend across so that no one parks right in front of the rims. Does that feel? Does that make sense? And I could have just gone with it, with it, but I thought of it. I thought of it actually last week or the week before. Thank I think you. I should bring it up. Um, otherwise, um, no, I've just got the report. I don't think I've got what? anything else going on. I mean, I got a lot of people's schedules for April visits. I don't think I'm going to go out on Thursday. Spring is coming late this year, the zoning office. So it looks like you had uh, four activities for uh, in, uh, March permits. Uh, I had uh, nine. Right here. Oh, you got this uh, February in there too. Yeah, so I've got I've got um, I should issued nine permits, and then I don't actually have my copy of my my little shorthand written report in front of me. Because this is the detail I go to. This this really just is an overview, and then gives you my hours work. Um, and really, the only thing to report is things are starting to pick up. You know, I've got I've already got four applications, four or five applications in front of me already for April. So. For a new homes or no, uh, one of them's a new home. Uh, what we just processed, we are getting a few of those. We had I was just do I just did the 
I just read the OEPs uh, asked for a report for all of 2023, and uh, our single home builds have gone up again. So that's the, you know, they asked for that information because they, they cross reference it with the census to do a whole thing about development in the state. So I, I tell them how many, how many building permits we've issued for homes. They don't include, include manufactured housing, but they ask for single and, and dual and multi of which we haven't really had any. Um, so we have, we have picked up a bit on that. I think it was just one on here, one permit. Yeah, there was one house on this and one that's down at the bottom here that came in, but came in right as I was finishing the report and uh, having mm -hmm. it. So, yeah. But, you know, still, you know, we're getting RVs because it's the, the season just opened for getting your 150 day RV pass mm -hmm. and getting sheds as always. There's always sheds. People are always doing sheds. So, any questions? Do you, um, are you do you are you kept up with the the uh, house bills that are passed? Do they send you that information that from I pertaining to I do. Um, I'm on PlanLink, um, which is a um, uh, something that the New Hampshire Municipal Association keeps the mailing list. In fact, I just sent you guys and planning board and a uh, thing that I'd done about fees. Yeah. You and I talked about that, so I just sent you a memo in the email about that. Um, but they they send a newsletter out announcement on PlanLink every Friday, which has all the new stuff. But then running at the top of it is is bills and things that they think. And I read the municipal associations um, summary of legislative activity and stuff like that. You know, most of it doesn't apply to me so much as it might apply to either you folks or the planning board in terms of actually making or changing policy. Um, very little of it is about directly about enforcement, but still I'd be trying to keep up with so I so I ask because in do we have anybody in Zoom? So is it my wife? So hopefully she will correct me on the bill number. I think it's 1258 that just passed that house is a bipartisan bill that is expected to pass state senate and it is stating that municipality municipalities shall tongue shall just allow shall allow for a second ADU. I have been following that. I thought that was interesting because we do allow for a second ADU already. The question, so how it will change there is us. No, sorry to cut you off. There is no lot size requirement with this house bill. And the right. town of Effingham currently has a lot size requirement for an ADU. Right. And right. So, so we would need to, we would need to adjust the regulations to that and something else that would be appropriate to look into at the same time actually is how the ADU um, part of the zoning ordinance and the two family dwelling part of the zoning ordinance, mm -hmm. which have a very definite overlap, how they affect each other. Because if you've got, if you've got, um, Mike, please. All right. Um, currently, we've got zoning requirements for two family. That we don't have for ADUs, which it seems like it seems like we should make them all match somehow, if to some degree. I, I mean, I certainly understand with the idea that an ADU, given the concept behind it, everybody here know what an ADU is. No. Oh, it's, it's an exception. unit. Sorry. A granny flat, an in-law apartment, whatever your mother-in-law apartment. So I'm surprised that that Mr. Pittman is. The moderator's voice didn't come into my head about acronyms and stuff like that. And I apologize. Yeah. It's such very cool. Yeah. Um, so I to me, the 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 salient thing about an accessory dwelling unit as compared to a just a, a two-family dwelling is that the key part about an accessory dwelling unit is one, that either the original building or the or the new other building or apartment be owner occupied. Um and, the, and then one of them can be a rental or it can have their mother-in-law in it. Um, and the other is that there's usually a, a, a size limitation. So you don't get huger and huger and huger. So you retain square some, footage. Yeah. yeah, square footage. And ours may be a little small. I don't know. They vary. Um, but the, 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 the two-family dwelling, which is an as-right, it doesn't even go in front of the planning board, has, has less limitations on it. Um, and 
but some more limitations. And it just seems to me that in terms of the regulation, the ordinance itself, it would make sense to look at those two side by side and decide where they are different and where they are the same and, and are we making sense? So it, it's silly if someone has an apartment above their garage already that they're allowed as a right to not be able to call it an ADU or if someone has an ADU to not be able to convert over to rental if we haven't quite figured out what we think the difference is. I mean, perfectly all right, in my opinion, to say, no, you can do this or you can't do that. But I think we should think it through. I think that the ADU part was put in there without looking back at what was going on with two them. And I'm fully in, in support of the, the, the two that we had. I was actually the one that argued for allowing for a second standalone. So what that means is that, is that the state said, as a right, you can put a accessory dwelling unit attached to your house. But that if you wanted a second one, um, if you wanted to do one that was in a separate building, you had to um, go through a special permitting process that it was not a right to have that second accessory dwelling unit, second unit um, de detached. Um, and the, the difference is that they would say whether or not you want it attached or detached, it's still a right in the state to do it. So that's what the bill says. And there are a lot of towns that, that that said no to the detached one, which is probably why this bill came up. If a higher percentage of towns had just gone ahead and said, well, yeah, of course you can put a barn out back. Um, the, the point about whether you need ex extra acreage, I guess the argument is that if the acreage will support it. Um, it is actually a second bill that goes with this bill mm -hmm. that discusses the lot size, not necessarily with ADUs, but mm -hmm. um, essentially what they're doing is, this is for everybody, they're trying to take care of our housing crisis that we have, workforce housing crisis, yeah. that we have in the state of the country. Right, and there are, a bunch of, there are a bunch of different tools we can use, and this is one of them. Um, <laughs> you know, in some of our cities, regulating uh, short-term rentals, Airbnbs is another one, not because we don't like people renting out their houses, but because out, outside people are um, are buying up, you know, middle income housing and turning it into seasonal rentals, and so it's just taking it's just taking it off the market. Very different from someone who might rent rent part of the house that they live in. So yeah, it's it's a huge problem, and and quite honestly, I mean, we could spend hours talking about philosophy of land use planning, but all the philosophy from um, 30, 40 years ago that brought about two acre zoning and everything that went with it, which was designed to protect rural communities from a level of density that rural residents treasured has turned out to kind of backfired. And there's a lot of um, focus on a new kind of planning and new urbanism where in fact, you balance um, large lots that wanna stay large with closer denser builds that are as appropriate and can provide better density. So you look at you look at a place, you know, you'd look at you'd look at lots all up and down School Street, say, or you know, any other place you might pick in town where it's already partially dense. And you'd say, well, it's crazy to say that you need two acre lots there. If someone has got four acres, shouldn't they be able to make three lots there? Because every lot on either side of them is like three quarters of an acre. So that's part of an approach to you know, putting density where there already is density and then having the open space elsewhere. Sorry. Sorry. Good. Good. Anybody in the audience? Questions? Well, I'm in. I'm in. Uh, Chris, you, well, there is a question for Chris. You still on the second one? I am not. Oh, okay. Second? All right, because uh, 1258 passes, but you never know what these things they can take us with in the land. Planning board is the one who writes your zoning ordinance amendment, so that would be a thing to bring to the planning board, as opposed to say the zoning officer, the planning board might see. Just a little out there. They don't know. We can do it. Thank you. Any other additional questions for uh, Rebecca? I have a question in general, not for Rebecca, but for the for the selection when it's your turn again. 
<laughs> oh, go ahead. Oh, okay. I was just, I was late coming in. I apologize for that. But I was just wondering, what's the plan for the big storm that's coming Wednesday into Thursday and Friday as far as making sure the roads get plowed? We'll do that in uh, public comment. Okay. My plan is to stay home. <laughs> Thank you, Rebecca. Okay. okay. And everyone wants to come back when during my office hours and geek out on land use. I'd love to see you. Uh, that's you, the chairman, sir. You can. Okay, yeah, we're going to do. Is that how you wish? Well, we're going to put public comment if you want. Or... Yeah, I think I'd rather go that route with it. Public comment. Good. Go for it. But first, uh, on business, um, approval of the budget committee 20, 2024 2025 schedule. Good. We're going to approve the budget that we support that budget schedule. Got it. All in favor? Aye. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Dave. And budget committee members. Uh, we did have one uh, annual annual uh, post closure report for yes. Common administrative question. All of regional Chuck was talking. You want to have a little discussion on this? This was before we realized the due date for that one was March thirty first when I had you sign it. I don't know if Chuck still wanted to have the discussion, but I didn't see any response on when I got the agenda. Did. I only the two questions. Once you answered the question, I when you were wrote down and said, "Hey, do we need to do anything for post follow up?" The answer is no. We're good. All right, then we I'm can, good. Then we can skip this one. I didn't see anything. But I did have a question. Can we post that report up on our site so people can see it? Okay. Okay. I was easy. And uh, the, qu the question I had for everybody this question is so the report came in and it mentioned some different activities. And I wasn't clear at the tail end of the summary whether we had it to do as an additional follow up. So I had Caitlin reach out to the engineer. The engineer said no for good. So that's what that was. Go ahead. Before you choose to open up public comment, um, Melissa had asked that if everyone could state their name before they. On a public comment? Yeah. yeah. Uh, announcements. Uh... Yeah, the Board of Selectants office will be closed April 10th for training. Probably Thursday this week, too. Huh? That would be soon, huh? Week Thursday? I, I will have to go to work. <laughs> we'll see you Wednesday. Yeah. We'll plan. Yeah. I'll come in the club. Well, the last is going to be hitting one or two, Joe. So take care of your. Perfect. Okay. Yes. Everyone's on this <laughs> yes. All right, now we come to the good part. Public comment. I'm ready. <laughs> okay, state your name. State your name. State your name. Oh, Grover Fisher. I don't know the kind of pay no more. I used to be kind of nervous, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but they owe me. I've been here 40 years. Played my house worth eighty hundred eighty thousand. That's about what I paid in taxes. But my concern is they plowing. I don't know if they got a vendetta against me, but they know the pig farm. and live down here in the Wilkinson Swamp Road. Can you tell me where you live? Wilkinson Swamp. Wilkinson Swamp Road. Two forty three. The contract states that it should be plowed to my driveway. Turned around. It hasn't been done. They stopped in that forest view, turning around there. I asked one of the fellows, are you going to wing it back at least? Oh, no, I don't have four drive. I'm like, yeah, I just don't, I, I don't understand why they went down. This is snow, turned around like the other way. There was a whole big window that come out from my mailbox out to the middle of the road, and it stayed there the whole storm. My next thing would be, Mr. Murphy and I, Gritted Wilkinson Swamp Road this afternoon to the fact that I spoke with Kevin Downs that if he fill in the holes, when the plow goes over it, it's not going to be a puddle of water. There might be a little bit of water, but not drastic. There were some bad holes in the middle of the road that we have to straighten out. And if we hadn't, when the snow got melted, there'd be a puddle of water splash, you see. Um, <laughs> As far as I don't understand why the town 
doesn't grade or look at the roads and say, okay, this should be graded before this storm. Like today, a lot of the roads out there, Pratt Road, I can name a lot of them, that should have been at least York Drake or something to fill in those potholes. This happened the last storm. We had bad potholes. We got the storm. They went plowing. They go pretty quick plowing it. We went over the holes. There was water, you know, when, when it melted, water in those holes. And that's what made the road so bad this time. Last time of them, you know, not being filled in a little bit so they can plow it, you know. It's been a funny season, you know, if the knows, I mean, flowers a thing. I thought I rode a till with my garden over the inch of snow or so, and we can so I rode a till that snow, right? And just to see how much frost is there to get started. And there weren't no frost, there ain't no frost to make it grow, then we, we, we were grading today. So my big concern was why did they not go to the contract since my driveway? Right. Yeah, so the contract actually states past your driveway, not to your driveway. You're supposed to go to the classics road sign, which is well beyond your driveway and the last driveway on the right hand side. Okay. That's what the contract says. I, I, I and I'm gonna that. I'm gonna call a spade a spade. When a cloud drought truck goes by my road, they don't turn around there. So I have a windrow at the end of my driveway that I have to deal with. I think you'll find the majority of the people in this room. They have to deal with the same thing. When the plow goes by their house, they have a windrow. What you've become accustomed to, Grover, they used to plow two year driveway. So they, well, plow, that's let me finish, please. They plowed your driveway so they could turn around. Our contract is not turning around there anymore. That's why your driveway is no They turn around down the street then? They turn around down the street. Down the street. That's fine. But why didn't when they come back, at least they're in my driveway? I don't care about the fact that, the, you know, and why wasn't it winged back? You know, I mean, this, Past storm, yeah, so, no storm. So we, now I'll get on to the other points you made. You just made the statement that you, you were rototilling your garden. So we got this false sense of security, this false spring. I did cleanup. I did winter cleanup of my own house. We're, we're, we're losing track yet. I'm asking why they didn't bring it back. Why didn't we I'm going to tell you that. Go ahead. So if you were rototilling your garden, that means... No, no, no. A couple of days ago. It was the last storm was a week or so ago. I'm sorry, but... You want me to answer your question, you have to stop interrupting me. Okay, go Okay. The roads are too soft to wing them back. To wing a road back and make it wide, you have to sit over on the edge. When the road is, when the ground is so soft and there's no frost that you have puddles that keep forming in your roadbed and you have water in the ditch lines and you put a 40,000 pound truck out there on the edge of the road, what do you think is going to happen? It's going to sink out of sight. So you can't wing back the roads, Grover. The roads are too soft. But they did. And he stopped at Forest View, turned around there. Each storm that he winged back, whether it was frozen or I'm not. I'm confused because you said they did. Why didn't they wing him back? But anyway. <clears throat> you got to clarify some of this. Sure. Like, so what had happened? It could, oh, oh for sorry. That, right? Yeah, let's vote. Don't be responsible. So what's happened is um, they've, they've only gone to Forest View. They haven't gone to Grover's house. They haven't gone. So to, they're not going to the class. No, they have not gone. The so street. they haven't gone beyond his road. It's right. Forest View. And what we've done is uh, we've plowed. My stepfather in, in my truck, is, he's gone down and plowed two roads. Yeah. Up. There wasn't anybody that went past there. And and not only just uh, the wing back, but just plowing in general. So during the whole storm, it, it didn't happen. I think that's where we kind of got lost in, in that conversation. But that's that was mostly the concern. That was the, the first part of it. So as far as I mean, in the contract, they are supposed to plow to that class six road sign. Yeah, which is if, just past it. Though. Yeah, and if that wasn't happening, this is the first knowledge we have yeah. of that. Yeah. So yeah. my assumption is, and that somebody, yourself, your stepfather, you said, yeah, yeah, plowed it. So when I do my road checks, right. I'm none the wiser, it's yeah. taken care of. No, so, it, and it was, and I, that was what I was going to say. And, and I do appreciate anybody that yeah. steps up and volunteers and helps out like that. As far as the puddles and filling in them in, it's it's so wet. What do you, you fill it in with what? Gravel? And it's going to be a sloppy mess. We've got this false sense of spring. It's not spring, it's still winter. Graders typically do not go out. What we've been doing with our summer road contractor and Mr. Downs running the grader is taking stone and it's just putting a Band-Aid on it. It's, it's a Band-Aid on a bullet wound. Yeah. And that's all you can do because it's still winter. We still, 
I mean, for you to say, how come the greater isn't out there? What about the York rate? We have a snowstorm coming tomorrow with another 18 inches of snow. I mean, do you typically, not to sound like, you know, I don't mean to be fresh, but I mean, if it snowed in July and it made a habit of that, well, then we would become accustomed to, you know, alternating between greater and grading the roads and making them saw and making them smooth and plowing the snow off the road. But we don't. I mean, it is, it's New Hampshire, it's Effingham. And it is still winter here, even though the groundhog said something different and the cal calendar said something different. It is still winter. And unfortunately, without any um, frost in the ground and having that false sense of security, it's everybody thinks we should be outgrading the roads and you, you, you can't. I mean, you, you disturb that soil and a hundred foot stretch of road that might have a hundred potholes on it is going to have 200 potholes on it because you're going to loosen that up and you're going to make that material more alive. And the problem is, and it's just like the potholes on Pine River Road and the coal patching. I believe that got addressed today, some of it. Um, we yeah, get it complacent and we, we are all busy people and we, we drive like sheep. That's my favorite saying is sheep travel our roadways and you, you follow the same exact tire tracks. If you have a pothole that's small like this on a Monday, it's going to be that big on a Friday because we all keep driving right through that pothole. And you got water in there, you hit that water, and it splashes out the material. And that pothole just gets bigger, bigger, bigger. If you dodge that pothole, it wouldn't be that big. But you, it's very difficult to maintain the roads right now. And it's certainly, I mean, we will certainly do our best. And I do believe that some, uh, there's been minimal activity on that road, but some has been addressed. But if you reach out to us and say, hey, can you at least get some stone on that road? And you're doing it now. The gentleman's hearing it. He's going to hear it from me. We'll get some stone. Potholes on Pine River Road were a priority that is more traveled road. Not that you guys are any less than anybody else. but um, And we did put some stone on Simon Hill Road last week. I believe that was last Friday. Mm -hmm. um, we had some very bad potholes, some um, some complaints on Simon Hill Road this time of year. It's you got to go in through Osprey to get there. Um, it's not plowed all the way through. But if you if you let us know, we will get out there. And I do try to get out and check the roads as much as I can. All right. You know my you don't know about not being plowed. My other one, each time I come here, I say to the select people, put them one of the back. Richard Seaman was one of the also was saying we got to widen that road from the stone to the stones with the walls. So the fact that the plow keeps hitting it and then just before Murphy South, that bad corner, if you come flying around that corner, you'll miss them. That road really needs to be opened up. You got, you had, when I moved in there, it was just me and the glasses. Then Murphy moved in. And now there's 11 home people living on that road. And and I can name six people from that go from point A to point B because it's easier to go all in the center right around to down walking Swamp Road. They use it as a fellow pair, you know, and even all went along. As I say again, I want to, you know, you take it under advisory and I advise you to get it done. The fact that I'm sick of pulling over and having to, you got all these people living on the Swamp Road now that really need to take some more of those trees down on the town roads and open that road up a little bit. And to get a, uh, emergency vehicle down there in this past, this, this last dawn, my wife has COPD and she, you know, very, you know, she could be at any time that she needs somebody there and it would have been almost unpassable for them to get there. So at that point, the other thing is you have it on the back of your mind to say, okay, let's get down and see what Grover's talking about, about the trees on his corner there and a few other spots that are really need to be opened up. You know, they opened it up last year down the other end. I've seen they left those piles there, but I'd really like to have you have a real serious look at what needs to be down on the swamp road. Um, Tim thought this house, right where he took all those trees out, the water runs right down the side of the road and should be trenched down. So if you got time, you can look at that. I got hog in bread. Go ahead. Yeah, because we got we got to move on with we're talking about the winter roads and stuff. We'll take a look at it. We'll take a look at it. Take a look. Yep. And we'll the swamp and uh, you know we will we will contact the, the contractor about following all the way. Yeah. All right.
Thanks. Have a good evening. Appreciate it. Okay. Next. Next. I'll touch on it. I'm going to allow you. I've been out plowing on the roads and the towns, of course, surrounding towns in Effingham for a long time. And I do development roads and stuff. And uh, I know that a lot of the winging back that hasn't done done could have and traditionally not done. The roads haven't been soft that soft all winter. I haven't seen a big truck, uh, except for one maybe, might have been one 10 wheeler this year out on the road. And that one didn't look to me like it should be on the road. And fortunately, I've never seen it again after that song. But if you're not gonna put trucks out there, then the pickup truck talking about, they should have more of them because most of the roads during the uh, morning hours, they're not opened up for the community, even in small storms. Uh, my road, Hobbs Road, that thing sometimes is one pass, the slash storm, obviously there was issues, but the full length was made one pass wide and even when he drove out, he didn't hit one of the other tankings like going out. He just did one, one path for one car. People were turning around in my driveways to let people go for a couple of days, even after that storm. Um, the storm, the level, how bad the roads were at it, like eight o'clock at night in Effingham was something I haven't experienced before getting around town. I would like to know that we have a bond I'd like to know what it covers. I would like to know that the vehicles are insured, registered, and inspected. I'd like to know that the insurance companies, those are insured for plowing and specifically for municipalities. Things like Walmarts and municipalities are Sioux Central. So many insurance companies won't cover that. And I don't know any insurance company that's paying out for an unregistered vehicle being on the road if somebody in this town gets hit. So hopefully you guys are doing your due diligence. I put in 10 questions that are pretty specific for 91 A's. So I'm gonna be looking for some answers guys, because uh, honestly, you don't need brand new Western uh, six and 10 wheelers out there. I haven't plowed for 20 years here and he had some older equipment that was decent enough and showed up and was maintained and was out on the roads and got the job done. I don't know what's been going wrong, but it isn't just been this one song. And I was good with not coming in and saying anything all winter long. But this was, I've been just waiting for this to happen because it was evident it was going to be. So thanks for listening. Yeah. And your uh, 91 A's noted. And you have it on the file. <clears throat> just a suggestion as you look at that 91 A and the questions there. Maybe a call to Primex to verify some of this. We already done that up, Mark. Wonderful. Uh, like, right. And I heard you guys wrote plowing uh, for the town, a couple of Chris and yourself, which is fine. I mean, I did it when I sat up there and we had issues with ice storms. I went out and cut and plowed. Just a note for the average person, since we were given a little information out, most insurance companies don't cover your plow at your plow. I understand, Mike. So some, not just you, but anybody on the road, you run up to Hannaford, you hit somebody with your plow, unless you've got your insurance company on board, average citizen, you're probably not insured. That it? That's it, sir. Thank you. All yeah, right. Anybody else? Okay. <laughs> well, I know. Both just hands went up at the same time. <laughs> Try to get it. Yes, go ahead. <laughs> so, state your name, please. Jim Morris. Thank you. Okay. I know what you like. Um, Full name. Let me, I'm just trying to phrase this correctly. It's my understanding today, Chris, you said we went out and inspected the trucks. I heard that. Did I? You did. <laughs> so, Leo, you look. Like maybe you didn't? inspected the trucks? No, in the past, the last summer, the truck. Last October. Yeah. You know what you're referring to? I'm re referring to your quote. We inspected the trucks. So you did That's not the inspect the trucks after the storm. We did an equipment inspection for the contract before we signed the contract. There it is. Uh, that was on So, um, and at that time, um, was there a truck on the lot that was not registered? Uh, yes. And that road was perhaps on the Effingham Public Roads this past Sunday? Yes. 
and that vehicle was also not inspected. It did not have a current inspection. Is that also? That is correct. Oh, okay. And lastly, I couldn't tell, but it probably wasn't insured. If it was not registered and it was not inspected, there's a pretty good chance for me to think that it was not insured. So, how did that happen? Whose job? I'm sorry, Mr. Chen. Which one of you is the liaison between the contractor and the board of selectmen? That would be Chris. So, Chris, um, we had a truck in that condition out on the road. I don't know if it was plowing. All I saw was that it had a wheel on um, on the ground. But aren't you putting us in danger? Isn't that? <laughs> So this is my fault. Yeah. That's that a very good question on you, man. You have a job. Yeah, you didn't do it. I did. I, I did. Did I have a job? I am the liaison. I am I am not the one that is going to own the responsibility for an unregistered vehicle being on the road. We have a contract with a private contractor, not an employee of the town of Effingham. We have everything in place within the contract and our requirements of what they need to do. When we did the equipment inspection, he had a horse in his yard. Have you seen a horse on the road? So what if he had a vehicle in his yard? We have a requirement and I made this, I already said this. So I like your grandstanding now because I've already said this and made it clear. When we did the equipment inspection before signing the contract, he had everything that met our requirements in both of these policies, the contract and the winter roads inclement weather. And because of the way the winter has been, it hasn't afforded him to bring out these giant trucks that we asked for to be on the roads and other breakdowns and things like that. So if you think for a second before every single snowstorm, I or any of the past or any of the future liaison to the board of selectmen, that deals with the contractors is going to be sitting in his yard inspecting them before they go out on the road. You are sadly mistaken. That is never going to happen. So now one of your contractors you have discovered was out. I don't know if they were plowing or not, but they were out on the public roads of Effingham with an unregistered vehicle, an uninspected vehicle, and probably an uninsured vehicle. If I were to do that, I would be cited in some way. Does that happen? I don't have the authority to cite somebody. And it has been dealt with and it has been addressed. We didn't hear that. Because, right. yes, you did. I said that at the beginning of this meeting again. You said I that. Heard I heard him say that when he was reading my letter. We have addressed that. Said. We have, we have that they addressed an unregistered, uninspected. Yes. Uninsured, yes. yes. I guess it's all set. I'm sorry to waste your time. It was we had an unpublic at three o'clock, basically with right. the contract here. So we address all right. So I'm asking about this one specific situation, which I think was horribly wrong for all of us. To put ourselves and our kids and to add to what you said, and to add to what Paul just said, I did state earlier that just this week the contractor came in and did all of those other vehicles. Because he was other vehicles that were larger, they can't go on these soft roads. And yes, they're too soft for the big trucks. You don't need a mechanical or structural engineer to figure that out. All you have to do is I can show you a picture of a gas truck if anyone wants to see it on Hunter's Bridge Road. I live in a road that understands soft better than any road in town. Um, so, have... you no, know, no, please let me finish because you know you you want to take this opportunity to try to completely throw me under the bus. There's a propane truck, dry weather. This was yesterday on Hunter's Bridge Road. Okay, the shoulders are too soft. The registrations, the individual came in here. I said that earlier, the individual came in here and registered the vehicles and is making all attempts, even though the law states he has 10 days, he's making all attempts before the snowstorm to get the two inspected. Hey, I have what, my one more point. Um, you may not read Facebook, 
uh, many people in the town do. It's not a law and it's not a requirement, but it is an excellent way to pass information. It is not. It is poison. It's. I don't care what you think about it. I don't care what you think. Well, well, well. Oh, citizens. No, never mind. One person is fine. Let him talk. Finish it up. So, Please. Facebook does not need to be voted on to be to get things done or to be a mechanism, but it's a way to communicate, and it's as good as letters to the editor and the Conway Daily Sun. And it's a very fine way to say, did you know the sand pits empty down at the... It's a very fine way to communicate. I'm sorry you don't like Do you that. know another way that's good to communicate? Town meeting. Were you there? Not this year. Oh, okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. So, but on, I mean... One. Right. I'm just going to... Oh, yeah. Okay. So on the Facebook, though, if you do have issues, I would rather do... Yes, yeah, so if you want to some chance. Send an email to the town office or to my okay. email so I can be aware of it. Not a problem. Thank you. Nope. Uh, Chuck. So what this last snowstorm pointed out is we have some management issues which have been raised, probably have been there for years through multiple administrations. But one of the things that I'm going to propose, and I actually put it forth, we're going to talk about it, is even though the contract requires, as Chris said, all this stuff's supposed to be in place, we're actually going to build a physical checklist. We're going to add an additional step annually for both road contractors, the winter and the summer roads. Sounds like a task list. <laughs> Very much like a task list, where it will list the equipment, it'll list the drivers, it'll list the licenses, it'll list the registrations, it'll list the inspections, it'll list everything, and it will be included into the file, the written file contract in the selectman's office. So that way, if this question ever comes up again, somebody can go in and pull the slip and say, here are the, here are the vehicles we have. And it'll be up to the assigned person working with that contractor to make sure the list is kept up to date if there are changes to the equipment. But we, we've never had the issue. And I'm sure, like, a you number of- have had the issue. Right. Well, the, the, well, 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 you know, well, the thing the thing is the contract states it, and it's one thing to state it. What we failed on as an administration, not only this one but multitude of past administrations, there wasn't a documentation process in place to validate that the select board had done its part of that validation process. I know Chris and Lenny went out and took a look at the stuff. Right? Wasn't documented. Now we'll come up with an additional layer of work to document it based on what's occurred so we can move forward and we won't have it happen again. Hopefully. I want to follow up on that. I think, uh, Kevin, how long was uh, Evans uh, doing their plowing for a okay. 17 years. 17 years. Yeah. So this is our first time we had a new contractor doing the winter plowing. So, like Chuck said, we're learning. And I totally agree, you know, we're just going to get a list set up and Move forward. Uh, Dave was, I had to. I know Dave. there was a lot of issues, Dave, so a lot of issues this last storm. The day after the storm, I was still plowed in. Within an hour, I had reached out to Chris. He got right back to me. And within that next hour, he was up himself following my road to make sure I could get out. So I want to say thank you to Mr. Siemens because he got to himself and went to, you know, the extra distance to make sure that I wasn't stuck. Thank you, Chris. You're welcome. And I apologize for putting the town in jeopardy by using my own personal truck, even though I have insurance and I had a snowplow in front of it and have for 36 years been plowing so you don't know what insurance I have to have. For anybody that feels that I, I as a selectman, put the town in jeopardy because I was doing so, I assure you I was not, and I feel that the town was more in jeopardy for not taking part and doing our part and assisting to make sure the roads are clear. According to my discussion with Primex today, you were operating as volunteer. Which I've been volunteering doing Libby for quite a few years. But anyway, moving Maybe forward, we have a question. Um, I want to let you know that the end of Winter Road on the high watch side, there's a very large tree that fell down 
I want to say during the winter, very large. And oh, yeah. if they hit it with it sticking out into the road, they're going to hit it with that high road. road. Yeah, right at the end of winter. Yeah, I, I, I actually talked to the contractor about that, the winter roads contractor, and I'm not going to lie. I was hoping that when the wind would push it into the ditch. It's but not it, but going, it didn't. But it didn't it's sticking um, out into the road. Because yeah, the white truck, the white wheels kind of around it. Um, on another subject, um, Neighborhood Watch will be having a meeting on the 10th at 6 p.m. here. Yeah, she's here. She was there. Yeah, she's there. Right there. Right there. Sorry, they know who I am. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of loud. Um, Tyler will be here. I'm JT is going to be here. Brandy might be here. And we have a 911 New Hampshire operator coming. So we're going to go from the phone call to 911 to you guys. And we're going to learn what the process is. It is open to teenagers, well behaved teenagers, please. Um, if anybody wants to come. You said six o'clock? Six o'clock. I'll make cookies if you can get Grace to give you a note. No. <laughs> <laughs> did anybody else take any? Oh, Pat Murphy. Did anybody else bid on the contract for final? No. Enough said. What else are we gonna do? Gotta work with it. I hear you. Uh, anybody else, please? Different subject. Different subject. Okay, thank you. Uh, I don't know if the emergency management plan gets updated every five or six years. I think it's five, which would have been last year. So I didn't know if that got done. So this is for the board and fire chief and okay. And then um, hazardous mitigation didn't get done at the same time. It followed in 19. So if it's five year plan, both of those things are up and probably should be pursued if you guys have the uh, wherewithal to do that. They are both on our radar and, and that is a project that'll be coming shortly. And go ahead. And they are on a to-do list. They are on a to-do list along with the um that goes along with the department head meetings that are starting April 10th, Friday. Yes. Right? No, yeah. if, no, 12. 12. Oh, sorry. 12. 12. And yeah, the safety plan and um, safety committee and stuff like that. So, which I think Chuck was interested in that as well. Our need for a safety uh, committee and stuff. And so, those are all on our two Is that only department heads, or could I get in on that with being in charge of Uppingham Neighborhood Watch? Uh, I don't have an issue with it because of the board. It, it, it's that no, I don't have the whole time. Was, you're, you're facilitating. Yeah, if you'd like to be a part of it, I can include you in the email chain. I know Caitlin was putting together, I think, an Outlook calendar event. I will get you Vicky's email. Yeah, I, I believe I have it. Okay. It's same same email. You, yeah. And I have a email group for everybody. And if anybody's part of a town group that wants to be a part of this, please let me know. My email's on my card. And, uh, it's more or less just a chance for us to all get together and figure out what we can do to work together better. Isn't that open to the public as well, Tyler? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. okay. yeah. Good. Chief? I'll, Good. I'll set, sir. Thank you. Uh, question, Leo, is State, that State, um, State, I mean, Steve Regal. Thank you. Is that to do list available for us to see? I don't see why not. Public document? Yeah, yeah. I don't see why not. We well, can. Uh, do we put it on the uh, website? It's on the website. Does that work for you, Steve? Yeah, would that be under the selectmen? I would put it under the selectmen, yeah. Okay. Just, yes. Thank you. Appreciate it. John. You good, son? You good? <laughs> Anybody else? Oh, okay. Elaine. Sorry. That's okay. Elaine, I, I started this off earlier before it was comment, but yeah. What's the plan if there is an issue for cloud as of when we start plowing on Wednesday and Thursday, if the cloud trucks are still having issues? What's your plan? So the, the contractor has subcontracted. We will have all of the proper as per language in our contract and our policy. 
we will have, which we already know they exist because they have a contract with the DAT. Um, they have a contingency plan and a backup plan with a contractor digging those to assist them and aid them and bring trucks over um, to for plowing purposes. Okay. We do have a we do have a backup okay. plan. So and for what it's worth, that was what it's worth. That was something that was facilitated by the contractor. In the event, knowing that we were having another big storm, that stuff breaks, he did go out and still. Mm -hmm. And I would like to add too that our summer roads contractor, who previously did the winter, did do the winter roads contract, uh, offered his his company's Evans Brothers Grader for the operator that's sitting next to you to uh, assist our current winter roads contractor. And again, that is something that they worked out together and it, if needed can continue and whatever compensation and stuff like that that's that's worked out um and obviously evans is our contractor so we have his insurance so we don't have to hunt out for that so um but there are things in place so to try to minimize uh any repeat and i would like to add again okay i work for the town of austin i you hope like I hope my boss isn't watching this and is gonna, you know, yell, call me in the office tomorrow, but $1.4 million budget, we ran 10 or 12, uh, excuse me, 10 or 11 trucks during this snow storm. Between the hours of 7 p.m. Saturday night and 11 p.m., it snowed over three inches an hour. Even with 44 miles of road, that's 88 miles, by the time you finish your route at three and a half, four hours, when you get to your last road, your first road has nine to 12 inches of snow in it. So yes, it was not unusual to see in three hours, 10 inches of snow in the road. We did, we saw it. So I did hear the comment here that it was unacceptable to see eight, 10 inches of snow in the roadway. When it's snowing that hard at eight o'clock, you can't, there's a gentleman sitting right here, don't throw him under the bus, but he drives a truck for DOT. I'm sure he was dealing with the same thing. I know he was. Yeah. So I know where he plows. Yeah. <laughs> plows through my town. Um, it's it, when it's snowing that hard, it's unavoidable. It is, and we didn't we haven't seen storms like this in years. We just haven't. And as far as the winter roads contractor, I mean, we went six weeks without a snowflake falling out of the sky. So well, I said it's been years. And that's been years. So <laughs> Go ahead. Anything else? Anybody else? Okay. We're going to go non-public meeting. No business Motion to Vote three, two, 